hi, um, this is Joe Maycook. I'm here on location at the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, 100 North 20th Street office building with longtime staff member Ann Valerie. Um, today's date is May 4th, 2022. Um, and uh, we're here to talk with uh, Ann about the history of, the, of her involvement with Philadelphia Green uh, and her involvement with PHS um, at present. So, um, and I want to start with a quick uh, what question about your personal background, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so where did you grow up and did you or your neighbors have gardens there? I grew up mainly um, outside of Washington, D.C. in Silver Spring, Maryland. <clears throat> and um, my mom and dad are both from the South, and uh, my mother enjoyed gardening. So I didn't really help her much as a child. We mostly just had to weed. <laughs> but, um, but I think she did kind of, um, you know, inspire my gardening interests. So, um, and then we moved to um, Ambler, Pennsylvania, right outside of Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, actually the year I graduated from high school. So your first memories of gardening were weeding yes. in your parents' garden. <laughs> right. And so your mom was the one who taught you how to garden. Yes. But that teaching, um, starting with weeding, what else, what, what did you learn in particular? Any anecdotes? <clears throat> oh, I can't really say that I, you know, I'm, I, I don't think I had a huge interest in it until I was older you know, like, and had my own place, mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess when we moved up to this area, we had a really interesting yard, because uh, my parents bought a very old house, and it had some old plantings, like, you know, giant wisteria vine over the patio, and fruit trees, and stuff like that, and my mom did a really large vegetable garden, and I think at that point, you know, just being interested in what was growing there. Um, so I could say that that, that might have been, you know, the more interesting to me than what we'd, I'd done before. <laughs> Which <know>. was? <clears throat> Which was just weeding. So, oh, yeah, yeah. so you know, being just seeing the different kinds of things and having them in my own yard, you know, growing apples, you know, stuff yeah. like that. So. The stuff you can eat. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So let's jump forward to when you said, as you said, you're a little older. Um, how did you start working at PHS? Um, well, I had um, two young children, and um, I had separated from my husband. And when they got to a certain age that um, I, could, I was comfortable leaving them uh, in daycare, I started looking for a job. So... <clears throat> um, at that point, my background is in art. I went to art school. and But I had, like I said, started to get interested in gardening. So I had taken a class at Temple Ambler in horticulture. And so I thought I'd really love to work like in a greenhouse or someplace outside. I knew nothing about PHS. And so, but I submitted a uh, resume and, um, you know, amazingly got a call because they were um, look, looking to expand the Philadelphia Green program. So um, that was, that's how I ended up at PHS. Yeah, and so was that like 1983? No, that was 1980. That oh, was September okay. of 1980. Let me look at my pictures. Uh, Janet, very hopefully, ah. uh, printed some pictures. Um, but so, so that was September 19th. So that was still when Ernesta Ballard yes, was president. Yes, Ernesta Ballard yeah. was president. She had announced her retirement, and she was retiring at the end of that year. But yeah, mm -hmm. she um, actually, you know, I interviewed with Blaine Bonham, who was the, you know, I don't know, director, I think, at that time of Philadelphia Green. But <clears throat> before he could actually hire me, I had to interview with Ernesta. So that was... That was interesting. She was a very interesting person. Yeah, know? any anecdotes 
Well, the, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, you know, in those days, they were interested in having more diversity in the staff. So she, you know, she talked to me. She had children, so she was asking, was I comfortable, you know, going into these neighborhoods? You know, she knew I had young children. <clears throat> and so we had the whole interview. And um, then right before it was over, she said, can I ask you a personal question? And I said, sure. She wondered if I was Cuban. And <laughs> I said, no. She said, all right. <laughs> but I think she was hoping I was Cuban. <laughs> oh, so she could have a reason. <laughs> so oh. she, so I would be. I could check. They could check off a box. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Is it, it, you just you just said your parents are from the south? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I think that maybe my name, or maybe I don't know, maybe the way I look. But anyway, I don't know why she might have thought that, but I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I knew the reason that she was hoping that that was the case, but. <laughs> Okay, and so then you get hired on to work with Philadelphia Green. What are your first responsibilities like? Well, in those days, um, they had the city basically divided into geographic areas. And so I was hired as a district coordinator. And in that role, I was starting, I was working in the community, starting um, vegetable gardens, doing what we called sitting gardens, which were like small flower gardens with a sitting area and um, street tree blocks. So, you know, it was a lot of organizing mainly. So, you know, I would meet with a group that had put in an application and, um, you know, assess their interest and then take it from there. So we would, you know, set up the day that up for deliveries, the day for construction, all that sort of stuff. So it was a lot of um, evenings and weekends we worked you know every saturday during the fall and the spring basically wow. planting and it was it was great though in that um i mean i i didn't know philadelphia all that well you know i hadn't like driven around but that really you know you really learn the area so i was in neighborhoods that i had never been in i met a lot of interesting people and so it, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Ambler to Philadelphia seems like a big... Yeah, me it's... In terms of the right. landscape. I mean, I was, you know, I went to school in Philadelphia. So I knew, like, that area. But, you know, you don't get out of your little area, you know. Yeah, Temple. So. Yeah. I, I also went to Temple. No, no. <laughs> when I went to school, I went to Philadelphia College of Art. Oh, right. So <laughs> when I took the class at Temple, that was the Ambler campus that I was... <laughs> the horticulture school, yeah. Okay. Philadelphia College of Art. It's that? now University of the Arts, but when I went there, it was, so, you know, Broad and Pine. So, yeah, yeah. So that general area is what I was, but, yeah. so anyway, it was, it was great to, um, to get all, all over the city, because my geographic area was actually huge. Um, it was all of South Philly and North Philadelphia, east of Broad. Wow. Yeah. So then one of the other areas was just North Philadelphia, west of Broad. But the number of projects were so concentrated in that area. So that's how it come that was smaller. And then there was a West Philadelphia and Northwest. So right. there were three of us that did basically the same job. Right. Just in different areas. Right. Yeah. Um, I do want to ask more about the jobs you did. But first, I was wondering if we could look at some pictures. Sure. So this, I believe, Janet Bligwell is from 1983, and so this is Philadelphia Green. So when I first started, we, um, you know, everybody on the Philadelphia Green staff um, worked long hours at the flower show. Mm -hmm. And there, most of us um, were assigned to what they called in those days the plant clinic. And it was... Um, we sat there answering people's questions about plants. So, you know, the visitors could ask, and we had books to refer to. But I don't really have a horticulture background, so I always felt a little bit bad. Like, I thought I was presenting myself as an expert, and I really wasn't. I could look things up, but it was very intense, and I remember just sitting there thinking, 
there has to be something better for us to be doing at this show or something more interesting. So I talked to the other two coordinators and I said, we should do an exhibit about Philadelphia Green. And I thought, you know, they're, you know, the higher ups would probably never go for it, but I said we should present it as an idea. And I'm visualizing just a little place where we could like do some demonstrations or something. Well, apparently, Ernesta had always wanted to have a Philadelphia Green exhibit, but I guess nobody else in Philadelphia Green really wanted to take that on. Mm -hmm. So they jumped right on it and put us right in the main floor. So that was our first exhibit. 1983, your first exhibit yeah. in, the, in the row home sort of right, layout. Right, yeah. right. I mean, it, it demonstrated all the different programs that we were doing. We had a little sitting garden. In the middle, we had a vegetable garden. On this side, we had a, a block that had street trees and tire urns. And um, I'm trying to think of what the other side was like. But anyway, um, it, it turned out very well. Everybody was happy with it. And then we continued to do exhibits for years. Yeah, this was under <clears throat> then director Jane Pepper. Right. Right. Any anecdotes about her? Um, well, Jane was wonderful. Um, I can't really think of any anecdotes, but um, you know, she um, she was great to work for. Um, she just was very kind, very um, you know. I just feel like she had a lot of interest in how the staff was doing and. I mean, obviously, she wanted us to to do what we were expected to do, but I, you know, she was extremely personable and um, just. I think everybody loved working for her. So. <laughs> yeah, it seems the match. Yeah. Was yeah. Last, uh, Ellen Wheeler, um, with your last, but so now we have a picture from 1985, <laughs> uh, with a lot of people in it, um, in very festive. Yes, very festive. Hats. Yeah. And you want to know what the heck is going on there? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so, so the Philadelphia Green, in, when I first started working at PHS, the main PHS office was in one of the park buildings. Mm -hmm. You've probably been told that at 325 Walnut. 325 Walnut. Yeah. yeah. And so that was the PHS staff. And when they started Philadelphia Green and they started expanding Philadelphia Green, they needed um, more space. So we actually had an office in the building right across the street at 320, 320 Walnut. So um, it, it was like just, you know, it was, we had little cubicles and, but the cool thing about that building was we were on, I don't even remember what floor we were on, but um, if you went out our, we had a lunch room in the back and if you went out, there was a catwalk that you could go across to another part of the building. So the building was, you know, like that. So mm -hmm. the, some of these people in this picture are from an architect's office that was on the other side. And mm -hmm. at some point, we expanded enough that we ended up renting space from them for a couple mm -hmm. of staff people. So we ended up being very friendly with them. And I'm trying to remember if this was a party when we were leaving. It looks like somebody's birthday party, but I don't know. Yeah. We Because at, then at some point, we, um, PHS rented a larger office space at 325 Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. And so we were leaving this building and moving there and a bunch of people. I mean, then, then it wasn't like just PHS and then Philadelphia Green separated. We had people from the PHS side as well as Philadelphia Green at the 325 Chestnut. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what the celebration was. I feel like it was when we were um, leaving and they gave us a little party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I definitely think uh, Janet has corroborated that not everybody went to PHS. No, so. yeah, so um, this is Lance. He was PHS. Mm -hmm. He was, um, I don't remember what his title was, but 
he was part of our, um, you know, the um, sort of operations part. So he worked with our Person crew. The black shirt. Yeah, and then this Paul Wolfinger was, you know, the the main um, field person. Um, so this is Jeff Myers, who worked for PHS. Yes. Um, Blaine. Yes, Blaine. Patricia Shriver. Yes. Lenny Tanzamore. This is Sally. Yes, that so, shocked me when I saw it. Yeah, so those are the only PHS people. So the rest of them are all with the architects. So I think, who is that? Let's see who that is. I might have oh, that, no, this is Janine Vinay. She worked for PHS too. I might have to get you to write down those names uh, okay. after the interview. <laughs> That would be, I'm sure Janet would find that helpful. Oh, sure. Question. I wish I could remember the architect's office, those people's names, but I really don't remember. Yeah. Sally may remember some of them. Yeah. Um, and so then we have uh, this photo, which I only have in digital copy, but of the PHS staff, I think in 1986. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so this is just black and white. Um, but was that also at. Um, was that at 320? This or? is at 320, oops, Ooh, 320 okay. Walnut. Yeah. So that's behind, so that's the park building, and mm -hmm. we had a nice little garden back there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we were told to wear something that represented our job. I didn't usually have, like, accoutrements on my head, but that was <laughs> why I have that silly stuff. So some people did it, some didn't. <laughs> oh, let me see. I um, think I have like pencils oh. hanging from my from the racers and stuff. Well, you weren't you weren't the plant doctor, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that at that point I think so. It's funny because I really wanted to work with you know outside with plants, and that's how I started out here. And then through the years, you know, they didn't have people. They didn't. We didn't have an art department, so mm -hmm. sometimes I would do stuff that was art related you know mm -hmm. and the first year we did a an exhibit i did the brochure but i had to do it at home because i didn't have a drafting table i had nothing this mm -hmm. is pre-computers yes so um so then eventually they kind of made me the art department <laughs> well um for, for what it's worth, it seems like you've been doing a good job. Oh, uh, well, uh, I haven't been, done that for a while. Now, it's gone through several phases, so. Mm -hmm. Well, I got another. We we have a lot of pictures of you, fortunately. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. This is frightening. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Um, let me see. So I believe this is a 1989 um, Philadelphia Green mm -hmm. event. Some of you... And Barbara, oh, oh, that's Barbara Lanick, yes. Barbara Lanick reading a guest, apparently, yeah. So what do you remember of that? I don't, I don't remember this at all. Let me see. Yeah, I can't even be sure who this woman is, but yeah, I that, wonder what this event could have been. Cool. We used to have um, mm -hmm. an event for community gardeners that, uh, what did we call it? It was a dinner. It was a rec our recognition dinner. And they, you know, people would get um, awards or whatever. And it was very nice. And so maybe that looks like it might have been something like that. Okay. Yeah, what do you remember of Barbara, Elena? Barbara was an interesting person. She was, um, well, is. I ran into her at the show this past year. Oh. Um, <laughs> So she, very talented, she, um, I think her background was landscape architecture, mm -hmm. and she was hired to do our, um, what do we call it in those days? I guess, I think it was called public landscapes. It's when we first started, um, like, working with the art museum and the Azalea Garden and um, doing more public places rather than just, um, you know, neighborhood gardens. So um, she, uh, I don't remember how many years she worked here, but, um, and she and I, at, with my daughter, who was 12 at the time, did a miniature setting in the flower show, and that was 
it was a lot of, it was interesting and a lot of work. <laughs> but we got a blue ribbon. So. Hey, um, congratulations, belatedly. <laughs> but, um, okay, I think I'm going to have a lot of pictures and a lot of more things I want to ask you about this period, but I think we're going to go through pictures first and then figure out how they relate to some of the things I want to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. They, because you've given... You keep giving such informa interesting information with those pictures, even if it's just... Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yes. Even if it's just that you don't remember who the person was or what the event was, the Barbara Elena gang, it's about how public landscaping. Um, but so, um, I, this is the Azalea Garden Party, and it's been labeled as you, Eileen Gallagher, and Flossie Narducci. Um, so yeah, in the just, 80s, you yeah, can you, tell by the, the shoulder pads. <laughs> Oh, it says it says nineteen ninety four. Oh, maybe. Oh, geez. Yes, I was. I thought eighties was the shoulder pad area era. Yeah. But anyway. But so, what was your involvement like with the garden party? There? Um, actually, I didn't usually have like a really direct uh, role. Mm -hmm. Um. Sometimes we were assigned to you know. Mm -hmm. serve drinks or whatever just help sort of be behind the scenes so um and i don't know flossie might have i'm trying to remember um i can't remember who i know i guess ellen wheeler was probably in charge of the azalea garden party even then yeah yeah, yeah. um so we really, you know, we got to go, and it was usually a really nice event. The weather was good; it was beautiful. Um, so, other than that, not a lot of, not a lot of oh, involvement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what do you remember about um, Flossie? Well, Flossie was hired um, into the same department that I was in at that point. Um, I, I, so I had stopped at one point doing the community, you know, being involved directly in the community. And they had developed an educational department or education department, whatever. And I, in that role, I was um, doing mostly graphics. I did the exhibit. Um, and at, at one point, um, I started something that we called the Tree Corps. And it was kind of a precursor to the tree tenders, which took a different approach, but this was our first stab at, at doing mm -hmm. something like that. Um, Flossie was hired, you know, it's so funny. Um, she came in at the same time, uh, they, they expanded like a lot. So um, I think two or three people were hired right at the same time for our department. and. I don't really, I think her job mostly was city gardens contest. She did like event type things, but not events like, that's why I wasn't sure if she might have done the Azalea Garden Party, but I, I don't know if that ever came under her actually. But she did, she was the coordinator for the city gardens contest, the recognition dinner, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I worked with a, um, a committee from mm -hmm. the community as well as a few staff people that, um, you know, usually people that were in my department. So Flossie, um, Betty, Tyler, and um, so we would meet, we would decide on a theme. Then, I mean, it was fun. I love doing stuff like that. I have an art background, so yeah. much more than horticulture. So of course I would rely on people that knew more about horticulture to help with the plant selection and all that. But it, I mean, it was a huge project. It took a long time because, you know, you had to plan the, all the staging, you had to get it built, you had to, and we did a lot of it ourselves in those days because um, amazingly, we would be allowed to work at the horticulture center out in Fairmount Park. Do you know? Yes. You know, yes. the big greenhouses. Yeah. They would give us a space that we, basically turned into a construction area. And, you know, I hired mainly the same guy from year to year that knew carpentry and he would work with us and we'd build the staging, we'd paint it there. And we would work there basically the whole month of February getting ready for the show. 
So it was fun. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. How do you, how would you decide on a theme? Um. Well, I always felt like the exhibit needed to focus on either a particular project, like all right, this year we're going to focus on vegetable gardens and just do all different kinds of stuff like that, or um, maybe it should show like several programs, or maybe it should focus on a particular garden that was cool in the neighborhood and then just kind of add other stuff. So um, it generally, I mean, the idea was to let visitors at the show know what Philadelphia Green was about. I mean, our hope always was that they would understand that by coming to the show, they were supporting, you know, this greening thing that was going on in the community. But that's a very hard concept to sell to the public. They're at the show, they're all they really care about is seeing pretty stuff. So, I mean, for years, people didn't make the connection, you know. I don't know if they still do. Yeah, that, that struck me as another element that um, I think Ellen talked about. Yeah, in the interview, yeah. That, like, the Philadelphia Green audience, the Philadelphia Green, Green constituents, more appropriately, and the show constituents, were not always the same people. No, they're not the same people. Um, I mean, sometimes there's overlap, obviously, but um, but yeah, it's it's making you know, and I think part of the reason that we don't use the name Philadelphia Green anymore is that people thought it was two different things. Like if you were in the community, they had no idea that even though we, when we would do our meetings, we would talk about the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, that that's who we are, and Philadelphia Green is a part of it, but they just heard Philadelphia Green. And I mean, some people thought it was part of the city, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's, it's not, it, for some reason, it's not an easy thing to get people to understand, you know. So at some point they decided, you know, that it was too, you know, let's, do away with the branding for Philadelphia Green, and it's just THS, so. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I think let's go through these pictures now. So we have a couple. We have this black and white picture, oh and gosh. I don't think it's labeled with a time. Or oh, it's so funny. This is Eva Ray. Eva um, Ray. Staff day. Oh, yeah. So we used to have a day where, and sometimes we were in some corporate office for that day, you know, and we would just have a series of, I don't know, meetings, workshops, whatever. But Eva um, had, was, a, at one point in my career here, I reported to do two different people at the same time. I reported to Eva as a part of like my education um, part of my job, and I reported to Lisa Stefano for graphics because she was the head of marketing, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so so Eva was and uh, Eva was my boss at one point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and so she was in charge of education. Yes. Um, yeah. Were you working with Sally at that time? Um, you know, it's funny. Sally and I were never in the same department. I don't think at the same time. I mean, no. Sally had come probably while I was still a coordinate. You know, a district coordinator working in the community because yeah. she came when um, Hal Rosner left and Hal was one of the original people that I worked with when I came. Uh, as a district coordinator. Yeah. 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 Um, ooh, okay. Um, I did that. Okay. So now we have another black and white photo and this is from 1993, the Flower Show Awards luncheon. Is this the blue ribbon that you were mentioning? No, I was probably, I don't know, why was I there? Um, I used to, well, a lot of us used to go. Um, that's funny. Um, I'm trying to think of his name. He was an exhibitor. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I don't think I was there because of, <laughs> of the blue ribbon. I think I went because... Um, you know, I did an exhibit, but we were not in judging. After our first year, and we won a lot of, you know, we got best in show in the education department, in the education category. We got a medal from, the, you know, the Bulkley Medal. 
we got awards from the, um, I can't think of what it is, but um, s some people felt that it wasn't fair because we were being judged against schools and it never occurred, you know, I didn't even know if we were gonna be judged, but after that we were never judged, which made sense, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah, not, it's not fair to compete with kids. No, well, well, it wasn't just, I mean, it was colleges, it was, you oh, know, um, yeah, it yeah, was other exactly. educational organizations, yeah. but still, I mean, we were part of PHS, we shouldn't have been judged. Yeah. But um, anyway, so, um, but I, yeah, I don't think that that was um, what that was for. Yeah, it would have been funny to be judged against the school you took classes at. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, right. Um, but yeah, the man in the pinstripe suit, is a uh, or is not somebody you remember that, that's fair um this uh, he i can tell he worked for robert montgomery landscaping <laughs> i just can't remember his name yeah but i mainly just said that for like in case anyone wants to look at the photograph in the future um, yeah but um and he's confused about who we're talking about mm. which i don't think they would be but you never know um but that said um Okay, I actually do want to go back a little bit now to your Philadelphia Green work, though, because you mentioned working with communities. You mentioned, like, this, you know, that Ernesta, like, asked you all these questions about your level of comfort working with them. And I know you were working Philadelphia Green during some particularly, during, you know, like, some of the earliest years that we still have anybody in staff at the organization. And in an overlap with some of the people I've already interviewed, such as Eileen Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Um so what and you've also mentioned that your area that you were coordinating was everything east of broad street in the north and then a lot of south philadelphia is that correct mm -hmm. yeah. um yeah so what areas do you remember working with specifically well in south philadelphia it was mostly point breeze yeah and um that ended up being one of our green country towns, which you've probably mm -hmm. heard about. And so it was very concentrated. Um, you know, the they had a very dynamic leader, Mamie Nichols. And um, so I did a lot of projects down there. Yeah, do you remember when that started? Well, I mean, I started there as soon as, you know, 1980. 1980. So I think it's it had started before I came, but um, I, because I know, well, I don't know if somebody was actively working down there, but, you know, Sally came from um, Penn State. They had an urban gardening program. Mm -hmm. And so some gardens had been started by Penn State that we ended up sort of taking over. Right. I mean, in, in terms of offering them more stuff, you know, meeting with them, then kind of claiming them as part of our group um, and, you know, being able to support them more. Because urban gardening never had the budget that we did, you know, in those days. I, you know, I, I don't want to make it sound like PHS was, you know, so wealthy or anything, but we had a, you know, we could give stuff. Yeah. So, um, so some of the, especially some of the really larger gardens down there, because there were a few that were quite large. And um, so, like I said, there were people that were already gardening there when I came right. on board. But then we, you know, after, when I first started, we had um, proclaimed our first green country town, which was in North Philly, west of Broad. And that was a very concentrated area. Mm -hmm. um, what was it called? Oh, can't think of what it is right now. But Hal Rosner who I mentioned, um, worked in that area. And so that was the first one. And then Blaine, you know, I don't know exactly what the process was, but I think it was if he felt there was um, a strong community mm -hmm. group to work with, then we would focus on that area as a green country town. Yeah. So because of the leadership in Point Breeze, that was to be the next one. So that even you know, created more of, um, you know, a demand on doing garden projects down there. So, um, I mean, we, we did, there was a 
one spring, we were doing like five gardens a day, <laughs> which was quite, you know, trying to get ready for this green country town to like proclaim all these. And, you know, we, they were very simple at this point. We weren't doing the elaborate, you know, whole, you know, sitting garden with brick and all that stuff. We would mostly have them clean off the lot. We'd give them a fence. We'd give them some plants. We'd plant with them. So a tree, some shrubs, some flowers, a bench. So it was a very simple thing, but we could do a lot of them. So So by doing five gardens a day, you mean like kind of coordinating the gardener's efforts and giving them the like resources needed to build? Well, I had an assistant at that point, Mm -hmm. and we were literally going from one to the other planting with them to make sure everything got planted. And your assistant was? Janine Vinay. Okay. And, I mean, it was exhausting. (laughs) This was, um, but, you know, we had a crew that would deliver stuff, and it was all very scheduled, so we would arrive on a, you know, at a place and create a garden. Yeah. I mean, it was very satisfying because people were thrilled, and I, you know, I can't say that they all survived well, because the problem with doing something that way is you don't always have a group that's understanding like what's involved and you know over the long term but right you know but a lot of them did and so you know but it was kind of your crash course yes yes building gardens right right yeah um but we did create um at a garden that already existed Uh, it was a large pretty large garden and we created a really nice garden that had a gazebo and this was like the focal point And um, they called it the wedding garden, and they Mm -hmm. actually had weddings there, the community. So it was quite nice. Yeah, it was beautiful. So yeah, I haven't been down there to see how it is now. (laughs) So um, one thing that I'm curious about, because I think Eileen Gallagher also mentioned working with Point Breeze. So what do you remember? Were you, did you work with Eileen Gallagher? Well, Eileen took over the area that I had worked in when I got moved to education. Okay. So she worked in Point Breeze, and she did for years, probably longer than I had. And then we also both worked up in North Philly, east of Broad. Mm-hmm. And the community that I worked with mostly there was Norris Square. And I'm yes. sure she talked about Norris Square. Yes. Um, and, you know, that was... That was really an interesting community, um, mostly Hispanic, Latino, um, and poor, you know, mm-hmm. but some really great gardeners, um, you know, Puerto Rican uh, background that they had, you know, grown interesting stuff, you know, and um, very interested in, in creating gardens, making it, you know, improving the community. Yeah. The um, first time I ever went to a meeting, they had a community center, um, na- Norris Square Neighborhood Project. Yeah. And um, so I was going up there to a meeting, and I realized that there were no street signs in certain areas of the city. <laughs> and so I had a map, so I just had to count you know, I had to start someplace where that had a street sign and count over on the map how many blocks, you know, so I could tell where I was going. And um, I just remember driving up the street, and I'd been there before, but I hadn't driven myself. So, And so I know I'm on the right street, and I get to so, someplace where I could sort of see the square, because they did have a big, they do have a big square, you know. And... I thought, oh, how nice. They were doing a bonfire. Well, they were not doing a bonfire. Somebody had set fire to the playground equipment in the middle of the square. (laughs) So I was like, well, there's your, you know, suburban mentality. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But um, anyway, they, um, I loved working with those people up there. Um, Iris Brown, um, Oh my gosh, I won't think of this lady's name. Um, is it Tomasita? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I've interviewed a few people up there. Yeah. I'll tell Iris after this. Oh, have you have you interviewed? Is Tomasita still alive? No, I talked to her daughter. Um, 
I wondered, I wonder about her often. I don't really know, I never really knew her daughter, but, um, yes. They still run, they, every garden up there that I've talked to them about, they still, you know, either run or are fighting to keep running right now. Um, because yeah. there's a, yeah, there's a, a developer has started digging out part of El Bate. I don't know if you're around for that. To, well, I, I, I know it um, mm -hmm. from going up there. Um, you know, we've had different events or celebrations yeah. through the years. I haven't been up there for a long time, but. Yeah, when did you, so your Eileen kind of took over Point Breeze when you switched to education. Yeah. Yeah, so when did you switch education? I think that right probably there? was 1985. So, okay, 1985. so I really was only doing the community gardening, I think, for about five years. Right. But you still ended up working with yes, the yes. people in education. Yeah. 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 Through that time period. Oh, yeah. that's, that's cool. Um, that's really expanded my understanding of your know, career path and what also PHS did with the exhibits. Yeah. Um, but so what do you, um, so you didn't, okay. Um, but so largely you were working with, um, let me see, Lisa Stefano and Ray. Eva Ray. Yes. Yeah. What do you remember about them, your supervisors? Well, Eva, sweetest woman. She is just lovely. And, um, you know, I loved working with her. And um, she, and I ended up like getting moved to Lisa, like mm -hmm. pretty, you know, full time. Um, I can't remember even when this transition sort of happened. It's odd to work to two different people. Yeah. I didn't mind it <laughs> because <laughs> I felt like, I shouldn't say this, but I felt like I got away with everything. Like I could just do what I wanted. <laughs> Um, I mean, I did my work, <laughs> but but um, it was almost like not reporting to anybody, you know. <laughs> um, they both are wonderful to report to. I mean, I loved Lisa. Lisa and I were good friends before I started reporting to her because Lisa had actually started here before me. So um, before nineteen eighty. Yeah. So I don't think long before, but um, I don't know exactly what. Yeah, she was. Oh, you know what? She was just here, or maybe, now I don't remember. I don't remember. That might not be right. I might have started before her. Anyway, um, we were about the same time. And um, she was, at that point, she was hired, I believe, as an editorial assistant. But um, she ended up, like, being the head of marketing and communications. Right. So... And so you end up there because of your graphics. Yes, yes. So, so as when I was still doing the exhibit, I was reporting to Eva. And then at some point, and I can't remember exactly when this happened either. Um, it might have been at the same time that they moved me just to Lisa. They decided that the exhibit needed to be in Philadelphia Green, and I was no longer in Philadelphia Green. So they had somebody else take it on as their project, but I still worked with them to do it. Um, and so I was mainly focused on graphics and working yeah. for Lisa. And I, I liked working for both of them. They are both, you know, I, I would just say, you know, they're, they're both wonderful as people and as supervisors. So yeah. yeah. I felt very lucky, you know. Yeah. And graphics. Yeah, it's kind of what you remained. Yeah, I did for a long time. Now I've gotten moved again. Mm -hmm. I got moved out of Lisa's department. Um, where was that? Into the show's department. Um, it's probably been, I don't know, maybe close to 10 years. Okay. So that's um, very... That, that fits well, because I was just going to ask you about our final picture, which is, I think, of Blaine's <laughs> retirement party in 2010. Yes. And so. That's funny. Yeah, very festive, nice plants in the ra in the rafters. Yeah. The hanging. Yeah, what do you remember about? Well, I can't even remember what year that was. Oh, it was 2010. 2010. 
20, oh, you just said that, yeah. 2010. Um, yeah, um, well, you know, it was when Blaine retired, so I hadn't worked, I mean, I enjoyed working under Blaine as well. Right. Blaine was a really interesting guy. I felt like I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him about organizing, like, you know, organizing your projects, organizing your calendar, you know, that kind of stuff. He was yeah. really good at breaking things down into, you know, so, um, and, but I hadn't worked for him for like a so, while. Yeah, like 25 years, no, 35, 25, I think, 1980, 1985 would be when you worked with him. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so, but I mean, Blaine was fun. He was a funny, you know, he was mm -hmm. a person that enjoyed doing, you know, having a good time. So, um, and I just remember him when he was getting ready to retire, telling me that he was worried about it because he, he was so used to having like a structure to his life. You know, like, so he was, mm -hmm. which I think is probably a common thing that a lot of people feel when they're getting ready to retire, you know, like, what am I going to do with myself? And I just remember telling him that I never felt like I would be at a, be at a lack of entertaining myself. <laughs> so, so I didn't worry about that. But I do, it's funny because as I get closer to thinking about retiring, I think I can sort of understand what he meant. <laughs> okay. It, beyond, beyond getting to that, you know, do your garden tasks on time. What else yes, else right. you have to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so actually that brings us kind of more toward the present. And so I wanted to ask, yeah, what do you do in the show's department right now? So I, um, when I first came to the show's department, my job has also transitioned in the last few years. Um, they... They kind of had put together, the show's department had um, had a number of, I don't know what, layoffs or whatever. They, they wanted to reorganize. And several people that had been here were let go. And um, so they, they put together kind of two jobs, which was, one was um, being a liaison with the major exhibitors, and by that it's the landscapes, the florists, the educational people. Um, and, you know, making sure that they gave us everything that we needed from them, their, their orders, their whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and also being supportive to them. And I think the feeling was that the person who had, I don't, I don't want to badmouth anybody, but the person who had done that before was not so customer friendly. So Sam's point was, you know, you Sam need Lim Henny. Sam Lemhenny. Um, you know, we want somebody that's more supportive, that like is, you know, keeps them on their toes, but in a nice, friendly way because they're feeling. I feel like there were, I think within the show's department, there was discord, and I think it was filtering out into other areas. Mm -hmm. So um, so that was part of it. That meant meeting with each of them in the summer. You know, Sam would do these trips where he would go out to their place and he wanted me to go, you know, go along, mm -hmm. talk, find out what they were thinking. How did the show go for you last year? What are you thinking of doing this year? So that kind of stuff. And it was very interesting to, you know, meet them all that way and get to know them better, you know. Um, and then the other part of my job at that point was I did do some graphics. Uh, most of the graphics were supposed to go through the creative services, but there were some simple or things that Sam wanted, you know, particularly, you know, focused, his focus, and I would do them. But, you know, I didn't, it wasn't, uh, we weren't doing anything that, wasn't approved, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing was working with him on the floor plan for the show. So I had to learn CAD and 
I still like struggle with it, but I learned how to do it. <laughs> and, um, and that was interesting because, you know, it's kind of like a big puzzle. You know how many exhibitors you have, you know which ones need to have a certain square footage, and then you like lay it out. When you say CAD, you mean? Uh, computer automated drafting. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it produces the kind of layout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a very, you know, everything's measured to scale, but it's, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. It's it's not an easy thing to learn. Um, so I, I know minimal, just the minimal that I need to know to be able to do that. <laughs> and so now you still work on the drafting. Um, um, I do some. However, um, so up until last year, I did, um, but now then, I so a couple years ago, I went. I w wanted to go part time, so I only work twenty four hours a week. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Sam about you know. So what am I going to give up of my job? And um, I was hoping that his thoughts would be the same as mine, which is I would give up the exhibitor relationship and just focus on like doing the floor plan, doing, I forget what, I mean, I'm trying to think of what other things I was doing like that were that type of thing. But, um, and he had the same feeling. So that's what I started doing. And I was reporting to him still, but then they hired Seth to come in as the creative designer or creative director, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so now I report to Seth. Okay. And mostly, so now that the show moved outdoors, uh, last year, Gary Radin, who's a consultant, really, or contracted, um, I mean, he does, he's, he's a planner, he's uh, an exhibit person, you know. So he did the um, site plan for the outdoor show. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, I still work with Seth on, so this year, for instance, I mean, it sometimes varies mm -hmm. um, because I have a graphics background. I still help either creative services or this year they've hired somebody else to do signage. There's so much signage at the show. Yeah. And so I've done a lot of that last year and this year. And then I also have worked a lot with the competitive class staff that, you know, they do the, for the people that are not the professionals that enter the show, like they do the window boxes or they do the, um, the smaller gardens and that sort of stuff. I've worked with them on, you know, designing their staging if they need it and um, contracting with somebody to build it, so that kind of stuff, you know, okay. which is interesting. Yeah, you've gone from uh, driving down streets with no signage to helping <laughs> design better signage. You're <laughs> right. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and, I'll, and just clarification point. Um, I apologize, I don't know this, but um, what is Seth's last name? Pearsall. Seth Pearsall, okay, yeah. Um, and because of the amount of work with the show, he has hired um, a full-time person that, so now that we work more in SketchUp than CAD, SketchUp is a 3D drawing program, and we've worked a lot in that. And um, I, I'm not an expert at all. I can, I can draw, right. but um, so he's hired somebody that full time that can do like pretty complicated SketchUp drawings. So, right. So she's been very involved with a lot of the stuff that I might have done in the past, but. You know. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, he's kind of focusing me on the graphics because we needed somebody to do that. So. Yeah, and that's your background. <laughs> right. um, okay. I wanted to ask if you have any anecdotes or stories you wanted to share about working with PHS from, from your starting from, you know, Philadelphia Green 
or five year tenure at that that part of the program too. Um, education to marketing to now the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Any stories that you haven't shared yet that you would like to get on the record? Well, you know, I. I mean, there's. I've had a lot of fun. Um, you know, PA, I, I can't think of any stories, but, um, you know, one of the great things about PHS is because the organization itself has so many different kinds of things going on that you meet a lot of different kinds of people just working here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the staff, unfortunately, the diversity in terms of um, ethnicity or racial makeup is not great, but it's diverse in terms of interests and skills, you know, so that in itself is pretty interesting. And I've always felt that way. Um, I think, you know, unfortunately, with the last couple years of COVID and not being in the office, we've had a lot of turnover. And there's so many people that work here that I don't know. And, you know, I, it's, it's kind of hard because when you are here, you're very focused on what you have to get done. And, um, and people aren't necessarily that comfortable, like intermingling anyway. Yeah. So, um, but through the years, you know, our staff used to do a lot of things as a group. Like when we had the harvest show, it was all hands on deck and that's like building things and putting things together and everybody working for like a week to get that done. Same mm -hmm. with the flower show. So you got to know people that weren't in your department, and right. it, was, it was great. Um, it's not so much that way anymore. Um, I'm not sure why, other than it's probably more efficient, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, than, but, you know, the staff has gotten bigger, so that's probably part of it, too. I mean, we, um, when I first started here, there were a total of 24 people. There were 12 in the P on the PHS staff and 12 on the Philadelphia Green staff. Yeah, the so. staff pictures. That yeah, was so, it, you, you know, it's here. very different now. And, um, but, you know, it's it's been a great place to work, so. Yeah. Obviously, I wouldn't, or I wouldn't have stayed here. And the other reason I think that I've been able to stay is, and you have a good understanding of this my job has changed completely a number of times yeah. so that's great <laughs> you know <laughs> it's interesting you know you get to do different things yeah you're getting to learn different things yeah and it sounds like you've always had kind of a lot of latitude um, i know well i think i you know hopefully that's okay <laughs> uh, i think it would i would expect it i would expect that an artist would get a lot of latitude someone working on crafts well and yeah things. i mean yeah. um but, um, okay, I have a, maybe a slightly more self-indulgent question, which is that you mentioned also working with, um, working with, at the, like, kind of the relationship between the horticultural extension, um, well, the, yeah, yeah, the ag extension, you know, the city horticultural program they were doing in South Philly. What, uh, do you have any anecdotes about working with them over the years? Or do you remember anybody working there? With, um, you mean Penn State? Yes, Penn State. Yeah, it wasn't City. It was Penn State. Right, right, right. Um, Sorry. Only Sally. I, did, I mean, yeah, we, we did. It's funny because um, I think that they always felt a little bit in competition with us. Mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe there was a little bit of, I wouldn't say resentment. But like I said, you know, there was the perception that PHS had all this money um, to spend on gardens. And so anyway, that, but um, we, the harvest show that we did in those days was a, a show that ran over a, a weekend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would start setting up on Monday and work through the week. Um, it started out at, Memorial Hall, and um, that's the, <clears throat> I think the first two years I was here, that's where it was, and it was a lot of work. I mean, we unloaded the trucks, we put up a basket, we, we loaded tables and set them up, and I mean, it was exhausting, but, um, and then 
you know, community gardeners would come and they would, um, you know, enter their produce from their gardens. Independent, you know, pr um, private gardens did the same, but there were two separate, it was very separate because mm -hmm. community gardens, all their stuff was displayed together and same with like individuals' gardens. And so we, um, but it was a fun show. You know, people loved it. It never made any money. I'm sure it was very expensive for PHS to put it on. It only ran like Saturday and Sunday. And, um, but the er, Penn State staff was always involved. So that's when we really got to know, or when I got to know them, um, because we were all working together. And, you know, and they were a good, they were a great group. I, I never got to know any of them as well as I did Sally, but that's, yeah. you know, Sally came here, so. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, I don't know, and I don't even remember when that, when Penn State stopped having their urban gardening program, but I don't think it exists anymore. Yeah, I think it got uh, defunded by the, well, defunded by Congress in um, the 1990s. Okay. 1996, I want to say, um, but they—I mean—they still do thing work in the city, but it's not. Um, but it's just under the ag extension. It's not the specific mm. urban ag thing. Like they have, they they have been doing work for Norris Square still. Okay. Interestingly, um, I just interviewed somebody there. But anyway, the. I'll, yeah, I have I have more thoughts that they can wait for after the interview. Um, cause they're not really. Okay. Yeah, um, tangential to anything important. Um, I guess, uh, thank yeah, I guess I want to close up by asking. Um, you mentioned uh, that you're thinking maybe about retiring. You're working on your own garden. Um, uh, what's what's next for you? Um, in your career and what you'd like to do. What are you plan? What are your plans and hopes for the future of PHS and for your own personal future? Mm. Well, you know, for PHS, you know, I just hope that, I mean, it's an old organization, so certainly I hope that it continues to mm -hmm. thrive. I mean, I think financially, you know, there are many challenges, and, um, you know, um, they, the leadership doesn't want to cut back because they feel like the programs that we, and the projects that we offer are very valuable to the community. Um, so I would hope that they can continue them. And, um, you know, I, uh, I mean, one thing that I will say is, you know, I love the community programs. I think that they're important, but I love working on the flower show. Right. Um, everybody here does not. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, it's funny because when I say that, I love setup. I love, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just find it really um, exciting and, you know, a great, a great project. So um, I hope that that continues. I think um, that having it outside was great. Um, I know many people are hoping it goes back in the convention center and, you know, I understand that, but I thought it was, I thought it was wonderful outside. So I just hope that, um, what they're doing now can continue into the future, you know. Yeah, and you can continue to yeah. grow your own garden. And, uh, and as far as my plans, I definitely don't have any career plans. <laughs> um, I, I would say I'm winding down. Um, I, you know, I love what I do, and having gone, sorry, this, I don't know if I have this on upside down, but it keeps sliding down. Oh. Um, I think you have it right side up because the letters are the letters are right side up. All right, up. all right. It just keeps sliding. Um, I, you know, I feel like I have the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. working part time. Now at this time of year, I'm working more than uh, part time, yeah. and then during the show, it'll be very intense. But um, you know, I enjoy what I do, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a little bit creative, um, and I only and. You know, certainly working from home has been great because before I was coming in three days a week for eight hours a day. But now then, working from home, you know, I can spread it out over whatever I want. So it's mm -hmm. kind of been perfect. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much um, for sure. sitting down with me today. That, um, and uh, I really appreciated it. Um, I think that this interview is going to be a wealth of insight for anyone who wants to know more about the early. I feel like we really, I really rattled on. But... No, that's perfect. It's all <laughs> about your recollections and your recollections of everything from Philadelphia Green to um, your work with the marketing department to uh, all these different photographs. It's been very illuminating. Um, so thank you. I'm going to turn the recorder off now.